The United States finds itself in a circumstance unique in the Western world. It is a high population, geographically isolated, resource rich, and sprawling state with tremendous potential. Countries like the United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada possess some of these individual aspects, but none possess all these traits like the US does. There was a time when the United States was the industrial envy of the world. Even the British Empire could not compete with the sheer industrial might of the US, who unlike Britain existed as a contiguous state in one strategically ideal location, with no great neighboring threats to speak of. America had become so financially prosperous a state that it could afford to export that prosperity and project its power over other countries. Colonies like Hawaii, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Guam were acquired during this time. The Panama Canal was constructed and during the Great Wars, the United States served as the offshore engine of industry that could effectively turn the tides of war in whatever direction it wished. America was an island of a nation and a highly successful one at that, virtually self-sufficient and fully capable of handling its own affairs alone. Industry and agriculture were plentiful and the service sector ran like clockwork and balanced with the other two. But today, only 10% of American jobs are related to agriculture, not even a fifth of that 10% representing actual farmers. Less than 9% of American jobs are in the manufacturing field, while an overwhelming 78% of jobs have become service-based. Agricultural and industrial work has over the past few decades been exported en masse to foreign nations who are willing to do such work for pennies on the dollar. When this occurs, we send our money abroad enriching domestic corner-cutting companies and foreign entities alike, while the average American is denied a well-paying job, while communities are denied enriching industries that fuel local prosperity, while the state is hollowed out from the inside, leaving only a shell of wealth and prosperity remaining. While in the past the government would have the common sense to promote and incentivize these economic sectors for the sake of its own betterment, today it has gone the route of saving money in the present at the expense of tomorrow. Rivals are strengthened. Whole communities dependent upon these exported industries dry up. The country as a whole loses that self-sufficient momentum that once made it a dynamo that could only advance forward. We need to take these jobs, these businesses, these industries back and put them to work for the American people first. We can no longer depend on foreign countries to supply us vital resources, especially when we are more than capable of producing them ourselves and in fact will grow stronger and richer from producing them ourselves. The American blue-collar workers should not need to struggle to find a job in what was once the industrial envy of the world. The farmer and his children should not be dissuaded from continuing their valuable work to pursue a more lucrative service job instead. Eager students fresh out of school looking to find a path for themselves should not be condemned to work a dismal service occupation in perpetuity because all other options are few and far between, nor should they be left with a wage they can hardly live off of simply because a foreign worker is willing to do that job at a fraction of the price. It must be repeated. The American economy must put America and the American working class first.